Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. I'm Professor Bob Long. If you're watching my videos, you know that they are intended for use for students or by students who are enrolled in my Human Anatomy and Physiology courses. If you find my videos helpful, by all means use them no matter where you're at in the land, but I'm going to go over those structures and those things that the students who are enrolled in my courses are responsible for. If you find these helpful, please hit like and uh, if you want to, subscribe to the channel so that any new updates you are made aware of. If you hit like, it keeps it near the top of the list so that people can find them more easily. If you do find these videos helpful, please send me some feedback so that I can um, decide whether or not I'm going to pursue this further and making a much more dedicated YouTube channel for helping people understand anatomy and physiology. Now, what we've been going over is going over the vascular system in the body, going over the wire man. Although we haven't touched wire man yet, I've been doing a lot of drawings of the wire man so that students can see the map of the vessels as they um, are spread throughout the body. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to zoom in in a few, few things. One, we're going to zoom in on the heart, we're going to zoom in on the head, and then we're going to zoom in on the wire man and we're going to get to know these vessels in great detail. Okay, so. Since it's only me in a very low budget situation, I'm going to be zooming in with my camera. And so you're going to have to see the zoom in happen until I learn how to edit this stuff a lot more professionally. So bear with me. I'm going to zoom in on this heart model. And although we've already covered the heart, I do want to cover one particular thing on the heart model that I want you to really focus in on. Okay. So let me manipulate my camera and zoom in. Now you have to ignore this little plug that's in the way. Let me slide some things over so you can see the model. Now, if you look, you see the entire heart model. You see a lot of the, the anatomy that we've covered in previous videos. And you're looking at some of the great vessels of the heart. This large red vessel here is the aorta. And if I tilt it a little bit more sideways and move this out of the way a little bit more, you'll see that the aorta ascends, arches over, and then would start to descend here. And these three main branches are the ones in my first drawing of the arteries to the head where you see the brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. Now, the first two branches to come off the aorta are actually the two coronary arteries that you see here, the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery, and they come off at the base of the aorta inside the heart. We're not worried about those, but that is one of the trick questions that's often thrown out there is which are the first vessels to branch off the heart it's actually the coronaries, most people want to say it's the aorta or these. But as you come up the aorta to the arch, you get to the brachiocephalic, left common carotid, left subclavian, always and forever. Here would be your superior vena cava with the two brachiocephalics. There would be the right and the left. And then you have the pulmonary trunk with the left pulmonary artery. So all that anatomy that we have previously covered, we're going to show that on this uh, Wireman model in just a second. Now let me move the heart out of the way. Let me put the skull model in place. And let me see if we can actually see what I'm focusing on here. Yeah, good. I'm going to pick up the model and I'm going to show you what you should be seeing. This model does come apart, so it's rather delicate. But if you look carefully at this model, you see some large vessels here. And I am going to take it apart slightly. You can see that the vertebrae here, the cervical vertebrae, have this red vessel running up through the transverse foramina. That is the um, vertebral arteries. Now those vertebral arteries are going to come up into the skull um, through a certain opening, but I want to focus on this for a second. This is your common carotid artery. If you follow the common carotid up, it splits into an internal carotid that goes through the carotid canal and an external carotid that goes to the outside of the skull here. And also you can see where the two vertebral arteries will enter through the foramen lacerum. Okay. Now, when I go to the inside of the skull, if I look deep inside of here, you'll see where some of the, uh, the vertebral arteries come in and they're actually gonna come in and help form, I actually said something wrong about the foramen lacerum, but don't worry about that. Um, you'll see right here where the vertebral arteries come up and form the basilar artery here and the internal carotids come in here and then they help form this little loop called the cerebral arterial circle or the circle of Willis. So I hope that's visible to you. 
You can see the common carotid and the external carotid. The common carotid ends where it splits into the internal and external. And then you can see here where the vertebral cell make the base of the basilar artery where they meet up and form that. The basilar artery has these little branches that interconnect with the internal carotids and form your circle of willis. We've covered that um, in the drawings that we did. So now I'm going to change my, my view here and I'm going to zoom in on the, mo the vessels of the head area on the wire man. Okay? So pardon me while it takes me a minute to get the camera set up, but I do want to show you this anatomy so that you guys can prepare for your exams and learn the material properly. Okay? So Again, I apologize for moving everything around, but I'm a one-man guy trying to do this with you. Now, if you look carefully here at the top of the heart, you'll see the same three vessels that we just covered on the heart. This is the superior vena cava. This is the aorta. This is the pulmonary trunk. If I rotate the model a little bit sideways, you get a really good view, looking from the left side of the human body here, you get a really good view of the aortic arch. Here you see the ascending aorta, you see how the aorta arches backwards? This model is cracked, but... And then it comes down as the thoracic descending aorta. And then you have the abdominal aorta, which is going to run down here, which we'll focus on in just a little bit. Now, one of the hard things to see when we're looking at the model from any of these anterior views, or even from a lateral view, is it's really hard to see where the brachiocephalics and the common carotids are. So let me rotate this model a little bit more. And let me make sure that we're zoomed in on the right spot. And yeah, that's good. So you can see the ascending aorta here, the aortic arch, and you can see part of the thoracic aorta here. Now, the first branch, if I come up out, one of the things that you have to realize is the right and the left are always on the subject's right and left, not yours. And when we drew the model out, we drew it from an anterior view. For example, this is my right ear that I'm touching. If I flip myself around, my right ear is actually on the right side. Same view that you're taking. And this would be my left side. So this model is seen from a reverse view. This is an anterior view. But a lot of the vessels we need to see are blocked. So we very often take pictures of a posterior view of this section of the aorta so that we can focus in on the vessels that you need to see. So now, if you look very clearly here, you will see that as we come up the ascending aorta, this very first branch right here is the brachiocephalic artery. And it's not very long at all. It comes up and it ends where it splits. Once it splits, the larger vessel that goes straight up here. Here's brachiocephalic. This would be the right common carotid. This branch coming out towards the arm would be the right subclavian. And this little one here would be the right vertebral. So brachiocephalic, right common carotid, right subclavian, right vertebral arteries. If I go back to the aorta, and I turn it just slightly here, you'll see that right next to the brachiocephalic, you'll see the left common carotid coming up right here. This is the left common carotid artery. This is the left subclavian artery. And again, off the subclavian, you have the vertebral artery going up to the skull. Now, it's kind of hard to see all that detail, so I'm going to zoom in even more, and then we'll zoom back out. So this is a really good view. If I follow this up, ascending aorta, brachiocephalic artery, I have the right common carotid and the right subclavian start where the brachiocephalic ends. Then we have the right vertebral artery here. If I go back to the aorta, this next branch right here is the left common carotid. Back to the aorta, this branch is the left subclavian going out towards the arm. On the right side of the model, they have clipped the right uh, the arteries and removed them so we could focus on the veins when we get there. Remember, arteries are red, veins are blue, except for the pulmonaries. Now, if you follow the left common carotid up, it's going to split into an internal carotid 
and an external carotid here. And again, it's kind of hard to focus on this. It, it, it looks like a big bowl of spaghetti. So I'm going to zoom out just a hair and I'm going to go back to this left common carotid. Now, if I follow it up, the left common carotid ends, it will split into the internal carotid and the external carotid arteries. Okay. There's many other smaller branches that we're not focusing on. Now, this part's also hard to see, but I'm going to flip the model around to the front. This is the way that we drew it, but we didn't have the veins in the way when we drew the model. Okay. But I think if I do this and I focus upwards a little bit, I can zoom in a little bit more and you can get an idea of where the two vertebrals come in. This is a vertebral on the right side. This would be the left vertebral, and they're gonna meet with the common carotid up here to help form this little loop called the circle of Willis. Just below the circle of Willis, the two vertebrals meet to form this little ladder-like looking structure with all these little vessels coming off. That's the basilar artery, okay? So right vertebral, left vertebral, basilar artery, internal carotid, and the circle of Willis. So I hope that helps you see those vessels really, really, really well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out and come back down here and zoom out. And I'm gonna try to focus on the arm, okay? And it's a little bit hard to do, but let's go. So if you look carefully, here's the aorta. The left subclavian artery is coming out over here. And again, we have a blue vein that's blocking its view. But if I flip it around backwards, again, this would be the left side. This is your left subclavian artery that comes out to about right here. And there's a vessel that comes down called the subscapular and the circumflex humeral. Between those two is our axillary artery. So the subclavian ends about right here. And on either side of this little zip tie would be our axillary artery. Okay. Now let me flip that around to the front because this is the way we drew it. I know it's kind of confusing. I apologize, but there's really only one way to do this and that's to do it. So now, if we focus in on the arm, you will see here is the axillary artery. Once we pass the circumflex humeral, this little loop, this one is called the brachial artery. And then we have the left radial artery. Here's the little thumb. And this is the left ulnar artery here. The left radial and ulnar, just like on the right side, will meet to form the palmar arch, a little arch of blood vessels in the palm. And then all of these would be your digital arteries, pollicis, indicis, medius, annulus, and minimus, or quinti, depending on which book you look at. Um, you don't need to know those individual ones, okay? So, again, quick review. We have the subclavian artery, axillary artery, brachial artery, radial artery, ulnar artery, and then the palmar arch with the digital arteries. I'm gonna zoom in if I can, a little bit better on the arm, and do this one more time. The more times I do it, the better you get it, okay? So, this would be your subclavian artery and vein. We have the axillary artery right where the zip tie is, the brachial artery radial, ulnar, and palmar arch, and the digital arteries, okay? Now, here's the really hard part. I'm gonna go through the abdomen, okay? I'm gonna try to zoom in here. I'm gonna try to show you this as best I can, but it's really hard to do. And I really believe that one of the best ways to see this is from a lateral view. It gives you a pretty decent idea. Let me zoom out just a hair. And at the top of the video here, you can see the aortic arch. This would be the ascending aorta, the arch, and then the descending aorta. This brown organ is the liver, and this little light blue membrane is the diaphragm. Once we pass that, we become the abdominal aorta here. The thoracic and the abdominal aorta are continuous with each other. Okay, it's the large red vessel. So now I'm gonna zoom in and see if we can't get a really good close-up, oops, I'm sorry, I hit my camera. A really good close-up of some of these vessels here that we need to focus on in the abdomen, okay? So, 
As we come down below the liver, the very first branch you can see, let me get oriented here with you. This little structure is the pancreas, I'm sorry, this is the spleen, pancreas is missing on this model, but you can see the liver and the diaphragm, you can see the spleen, and you can see two kidneys here. And it's very difficult to see because these vessels are really scrunched together, but I think, I do believe, I got a good view of it. Right underneath the liver, we're going to have this vessel that comes out. And the easiest way to find the celiac trunk is to find the spleen. Follow the splenic artery across. And you'll see if we follow the splenic artery backwards, that it's going to meet up with this vessel that goes to the liver, which is the hepatic artery. And where those two meet, this just little short, short section here is the hepatic portal vein. I'm sorry, hepatic portal. The celiac trunk. This is the celiac trunk from the, from the aorta until it splits. When it splits, there's going to be three vessels that arise. We have the splenic artery, the hepatic artery, and then this little loop of red and blue is the gastric arteries and veins. Okay, So the little red one here would be the gastric artery. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better on that and see if we can't see it, and then we'll zoom out. Okay, that's about as close as I can get. As soon as we come down below the liver on the abdominal aorta, celiac trunk, splenic, hepatic artery, and the gastric artery or gastric loop. Okay. Now, the way that the wire man is set up is some of these vessels are blocking each other's, the view of where the other one comes off. But if I look just below where the celiac trunk is and the splenic, off of the abdominal aorta is this large red vessel here that comes all the way down. That's the superior mesenteric. Just below that, you can see the two vessels going to the kidneys. The red ones are the renal arteries. The blue ones would be the renal veins. So you see the left renal artery and the right renal artery here. And then just below that, these two little tiny vessels coming off are called the gonadal arteries. Let me zoom out just a bit and see if we can't catch all that from a different angle. Okay, I'm gonna twist the model just a little bit because the superior mesenteric is blocking part of our view. But just be below the, the renals are these two little tiny vessels here called the gonadals. They're very hard to see. And then this would be the inferior mesenteric. The inferior mesenteric joins the aorta just below the gonadal arteries, okay? Now that's the best I can do for what that section has to offer, okay? It's very cramped, and I really can't get a camera in here unless I had a handheld one. This, by the way, is called the um, mesenteric anastomosis. The term anastomosis means a connection. This is not on your list, but someone always asks. You can look up mesenteric anastomosis, and that's that vessel. I'm not gonna test you on it, okay? Now, if I try to go to the front again, let me see how well you can see what I'm trying to focus on. If I zoom out, at the end of the abdominal aorta, you can see that it splits right here, and this would be your common iliac arteries. We have the right common iliac, over here, sorry, right common iliac, and left common iliac. And then when that splits, you have the internal iliacs and the external iliacs that go out here, okay? so. Common iliac, internal and external iliac arteries, common iliac artery, internal iliac artery, external iliac artery. The external iliac artery remains the external iliac artery until we get to um, this, uh, till we get to the iliac bone. So now I'm going to reset this entire thing and see if I can't focus on the leg. And if I can't get the whole leg in here, you zoom out and then set the camera and then zoom in. And as I zoom in, it moves things, but I'm going to do the best I can to show you these vessels. And I'll zoom in on the lower leg when I get the chance. So 
If you look very carefully, let me zoom in on the upper leg and then we'll worry about the lower leg. You see all the major organs up here. If I zoom in, you will see at the top edge here is the common iliac, the internal iliac, and the external iliac until we get to this yellow zip tie. The external iliac ends as it crosses the iliac bone and becomes the femoral or femoral artery. The femoral or femoral artery is very large and it comes all the way down to just a little bit above where it splits. And you see these small branching vessels here. Right in this area would be called the popliteal artery or popliteal artery, depending on if you eat tomatoes or tomatoes. But this is the popliteal artery here. And then it splits. On the front is the anterior tibial. On the back is the posterior tibial artery. And then laterally will be the fibular artery. So I hope you can see those three. Um, it's a little bit hard to focus in on them. So let me readjust my camera one last time and then zoom in and see if we can't get a really good view of this. Now, I'm trying to show you something that's three-dimensional in a flat picture. So it's really hard to see, but as the femoral artery would come down, this last little section right here would be the popliteal artery. And if I trace it down the front is the anterior tibial. Back here would be the posterior tibial all the way down. And then this is called the fibular artery on the outside. That little connection is called the fibular anastomosis. Anastomosis means to connect with um, but, or cut across. But anyway, this is the fibular artery or perineal artery. And this little loop would be the dorsal arch. Okay. So those are all the arteries on the wire man. I hope that that helps you. I'm not sure if it does because it's very difficult to capture all this detail on these videos. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope you learned something from this. Catch you on the flip side.